Hello, this is Ron Clymer again, back for session three of reading the comments from the North Carolina Real Estate License Law. This is session three. If you haven't been in session one and two, may I suggest that you go back and watch those. But this is from this book, and this is Appendix A in the back of the book. And this stuff is on the state portion of the exam, which is the portion that people seem to do the worst in. So let's get started and let's get started. And I'm actually on page 621. We've been through the omissions and misrepresentations and I'm down at making false promises in the second column on page 621 if it's still this book. Making false promises. Real estate brokers are prohibited from making any false promises or character likely to influence, persuade, or induce. It is unimportant whether the broker originally intended to honor his or her promise. Failure to honor a promise is sufficient to constitute a violation of this provision. The promise may relate to any matter which might influence, persuade, or induce a person to perform some act he may not otherwise perform. Example, an agent promises a prospective apartment tenant that the apartment will be repainted before the tenant moves in. The agent then fails to have the work done after the lease is signed. Example, an agent promises the property owner that if his or her home for sale with the agent's firm, the firm will steam clean all the carpets and wash all the windows. The firm then fails to have that work done after the listing is signed. Other misrepresentations. Real estate brokers are prohibited from pursuing a course of misrepresentation or making false promises through other agents or salespeople or through advertising or other means. Example, in marketing subdivision lots for a developer, a broker regularly advertises that the lots for sale are suitable for residential use when in fact the lots will not pass a soil suitability test for on-site sewage systems. Example, a broker is marking a new condominium complex, which is under construction. Acting with the full knowledge and consent of the broker, the broker's agents regularly inform prospective buyers that units will be available for occupancy on June 1st, when in fact, they won't be available till at least September the 1st. Conflict of interest. Undisclosed dual agency, GS93, prohibits a real estate agent from acting for more than one party in a transaction without the knowledge of all parties for whom he is, for whom he acts. Commission rule blah 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 that takes this a step further by providing that the broker or brokerage firm representing one party in a transaction shall not undertake to represent another party in a transaction without the expressed authority, the authorization of dual agency, of each party. Subject to one exception explained as part of the dual agency discussion in the general brokerage provision section. A typical violation of this provision occurs when the agent has only one principal in a transaction but acts in a manner which benefits another party without the principal's knowledge. In such a situation, the agent violates the duty of loyalty and consent owed to the principal. Example, a house is listed with firm X. When showing the house to a prospective buyer not represented by Firm X, an agent of Firm X advises the buyer to offer substantially less than the listing price because the seller must move soon and is very anxious to sell the property fast. The agent and, his, and Firm X are contractually obligated to represent only the seller. By advising the buyer, as indicated in this example, the agent is acting to benefit the buyer without the seller's knowledge and consent. This violates both the license law and the law of agency. Example, an agent with Firm X assists her sister in purchasing a home listed with Firm X without advising Firm X or the seller of her relationship with the buyer. The agent is officially acting as a sub-agent of the seller in this transaction. In this situation, there is an inherent conflict of interest on the part of the agent. If the agent does not disclose her relationship to both parties, then the agent violates both the license law and the law of agency. In fact, her allegiance lies with her sister 
The agent should instead act as a buyer's agent from the outset. The same would be true if the buyer were a close friend or business associate of the agent, or in any way enjoyed a special relationship to the agent, which would clearly influence the agent to act on behalf of the buyer rather than the seller. Self-dealing. GS 93 also prohibits any self-dealing on part of an agent. For example, if an agent attempts to make a secret profit in a transaction where he is supposed to be representing a principal, then the agent violates the conflict of interest provision. Example, an agent lists a parcel of undeveloped property which is zoned for single-family residential use. The agent knows that the property is about to be rezoned for multifamily residential use, which will greatly increase the property's value. Rather than informing the seller of this fact, the agent offers to buy the property at the listed price, telling the seller that he wants to acquire the property for long-term investment. The deal closes. Several months later, after the rezoning has been accomplished, the agent sells the property at a substantial profit, representing another broker without consent. GS 93 prohibits a licensee from representing or attempting to represent a real estate broker other than the broker by whom he is engaged or associated without the expressed knowledge and consent of the broker with whom he is associated. While brokers may work for or be associated with more than one real estate company at a time, so long as they have the express permission of all brokers in charge, Provisional brokers may never engage in brokerage activities for more than one company at a time. Improper Brokerage Commission GS 93 A broker may not pay a commission or valuable consideration to any person or act for services performed in violation of the license law. This provision flatly prohibits a broker from paying an unlicensed person for acts that require a real estate license. Following examples of prohibited payment. Example, the broker, the payment by broker of commissions to previously licensed sales associate who failed to properly renew their license for acts performed after their license has expired. Note that payment could properly be made for commissions earned while the licensee was on active status, even if the license is inactive or expired at the time of payment. But the determining factor is whether the license was on active status at the time all services were rendered, which generated the commission. Example, the payment of a commission salary or fee by brokers to unlicensed employees or independent contractors who haven't passed the license exam for performing acts or services requiring a real estate license. Example, the payment by licensees of a finder's fee, referral fee, bird dog fee, or any other valuable consideration to unlicensed persons who find, introduce, or bring together parties to a real estate transaction. This is true even if the ultimate consummation of the transaction is accomplished by a licensee and even if the act is performed without expectation of compensation. Thus, a licensee may not compensate a friend, relative, former client, or any other unlicensed person for referring a prospective buyer, seller, landlord, or tenant to such licensee. This prohibition extends to owner referral programs at condominiums or timeshare complexes and tenant referral programs at apartment complexes. In addition, a provisional broker may not accept any compensation for brokerage services from anyone other than his employing brokerage or brokerage firm. Consequently, a broker may not pay a commission or fee directly to a provisional broker of another broker or firm. Any such payment must be made through the provisional broker's employing broker or firm. Note, see also the discussion of Rule A0109 on brokerage fees and compensation under the subsequent section titled general brokerage provision. Unworthiness and incompetence. This broad provision authorizes the Real Estate Commission to discipline any licensee who, based on his or her conduct and consideration of the public interest, is found to be unworthy or incompetent to work in the real estate business. A wide range of conduct may serve as a basis for the finding of unworthiness or incompetence, including 
conduct which violates other specific provisions of the license law or commission rules. Here are a few examples of improper conduct which do not specifically violate another license law provision but may support a finding of unworthiness or incompetence. One, a failure to properly complete, fill in, the real estate contracts or use contract forms which are legally adequate. Two, failure to diligently perform the services required under listing contracts or property management contracts. Three, failure to provide accurate closing statements to sellers and buyers or accurate income expense reports to property owners. Improper dealing. This broad provision prohibits a real estate licensee from engaging in any other conduct not specifically prohibited elsewhere in the license law, which constitutes improper, fraudulent, or dishonest dealing. This determination as to whether particular conduct constitutes improper, fraudulent, or dishonest dealing is made by the Real Estate Commission on a case-by-case -case basis. Therefore, a broad range of a broad range of conduct might be found objectionable under this provision depending on the facts in a case. One category of conduct which violates this provision is any breach of duty to exercise skill, care, and diligence on behalf of a client under the law of agency. Note that other breaches of agency law duties constituting either a misrepresentation or omission, a conflict of interest, or a failure to properly account for trust funds are covered by other specific statutory provisions. Another category of conduct which violates this provision is a violation of the State Fair Housing Act. This mentioned separately under the discriminatory practice, including, example, a broker is personally conducting the closing of a real estate sale he has negotiated. The seller does not show up for the closing. In order to avoid a delay, in order to avoid a delay in closing the transaction, the broker forges the seller's signature on a deed to the property and proceeds with the closing in the seller's absence. Example, an agent assists a prospective buyer in perpetrating a fraud in connection with a mortgage loan application by preparing two contracts, one with the false information for su submission to the lending institution and another which expresses the actual agreement between the seller and the buyer. This practice commonly is referred to as dual contracting or contract kiting. Example, a broker lists a property for sale and agrees in the listing contract to place the listing in the local MLS to advertise the property for sale and to use his best efforts in good faith to find a buyer. The broker places a for sale sign on the property but fails to place the property in the MLS for more than 30 days and fails to otherwise advertise the property during the listing period. The broker has failed to exercise reasonable skill, care, and diligence on behalf of his client and is required by the listing contract and the law of agency. Example, an agent is aware that the owners of a house listed with the company are out of town for the weekend, yet the agent gives his prospective buyer the house key and allows the prospect to look at the listed house without accompanying the prospect. The agent has failed to exercise reasonable skill, care, and diligence on behalf of his client. Discriminatory practice. Any conduct by a licensee that violates the provision of the State Fair Housing Act is considered by the commission to constitute improper conduct and to be a violation of the license law. Practice of law. Real estate licensees may not perform for others any legal service described in GS 84 or any other legal service. Following are several examples of real estate related legal services which licensees may not provide. Drafting legal documents such as deeds, deeds of trust, leases, real estate contracts for others. Although licensees may fill in or complete pre-printed real estate contract forms which have been drafted by an attorney, they may not under any circumstances, complete or fill in deeds or deeds of trust forms. Abstracting or rendering an opinion of legal title to real property. Providing legal advice of any nature to clients, 
and customers, including advice concerning the nature and any interest in real estate or means of holding title to real estate. Note, although providing advice concerning the legal ramifications of a real estate sales contract is prohibited, merely explaining the revisions of such a contract is not only acceptable, but highly recommended. Violating any commission rules. The law also has a catch-all provision that subjects a licensee to a disciplinary action for violating any rule or adopted by the commission. Note, the provisions of GS 93 are addressed elsewhere in these comments under the general brokerage provision section. Other prohibited act. In addition to the prohibited act previously discussed, GS 93 prescribes several other specific grounds for disciplinary action by the commission, including one, where the licensee has obtained a license by false or fraudulent misrepresentation, uh, i.e. falsifying documentation of pre-licensed education, failing to disclose prior criminal convictions. Two, where a licensee has been convicted of or pleaded guilty or no contest to a number of listed misdemeanor or felonies plus any other offense that shows professional unfitness or involves moral turpitude that would reasonably affect the licensee's performance in the real estate business. Three, when a broker's unlicensed employee who is exempt from licensing under GS 93 has committed an act which is committed by the broker would have constituted a violation of GS 93 for which the broker could be disciplined. Where a licensee who is also licensed as an appraiser, attorney, home inspector, mortgage broker, general contractor, or other licensed professional or occupation has been disciplined for an offense under any law involving fraud, theft, misrepresentation, breach of trust, or fiduciary responsibility, or willful or negligent malpractice. Lastly, be aware that under B3, Licensees may be disciplined for violating any of the 15 provisions under subsection A when selling, buying, or leasing their own property. So this is Ron, and I'm going to take another break here. And don't forget, if it's doing you some good, go down to like, click like. If it's doing you a lot of good, leave a comment. And if you'd like to share it with your classmates, click share, put it on your class Facebook page and or your own Facebook page. Thank you very much.